Hello everyone, I'm Song Hao. I'm a, my MSc student in Tsinghua University and doing some research about kernel fuzzing. Today I'm going to introduce you a method called Research Learning Guided Kernel Fuzzing. Hope this method can give you some inspirations. I will talk about Curry Guided Kernel Fuzzing, re motivation, relational learning, implementation detail, and the evaluation results. And I finally talk about the future work. We in user space, we first compare source code and first driver, uh, so we get vulnerable program. And then we select input from corps and mutate it, and feed the input to funding process. Based on the feedback, we continuously update corps. This workflow works very well in user space funding. However, it has become different and difficult when it comes to kernel space funding. Here is a basic introduction to kernel space funding. We first compare kernel source and we sanitize the config. Then we use corps, which contains call sequences. I will talk about this later. Uh, syscall description, some meta information as input to mutation and generation. Uh, then we generate input, which is a call sequence, and feed the input to the executor. The executor issues his call. And then based on the feedback, feedback we continuously refine the corps and, and meta information. We also save crash reports and reproduce the program as well as we found kernel crash. We need to focus on the input. Different from user space, kernel father use call sequence as input. And the target here that we is that we want to generate a call sequences that each call parameter can satisfy structural and partial semantics constraints, and we want to set up kernel related kernel state for each call and reach deep kernel logic. To do this, we need some meta information about Cisco themselves. Uh, we use Cisco description language syslon to do this. It supports rich type types constructors. It also supports semantic modifiers. Here, example, cost type, flag type, length type, also also resource type. I will talk about this later. Uh, with syslon, we can encode accurate struct and uh, semantics of Cisco. We need to focus on two features of syslon. The first one is resource type. It means that the value should be output from another call, and it actually means uh, represents uh, some kind of resource inside the kernel. Also, we can use this kind of format to say that resource A is subtype of resource B. Here is an example. Another feature is called specialization. We can use we can use this feature to specialize partial arguments of a syscall. Here is another example. We specialize the first two arguments of a socket. A father need to uh, generate high quality con combination. That means for a given set of this call, uh, we need to generate sequence a sequence of calls. Which means the problem is for sequence C0 and C1, how do we choose the next this call? Uh, let's first talk about the problem behind the random choosing. Uh, this kernel contains about, about 400 syscalls, and the system defines more than 4,000 specialized syscalls. Uh, typically, each call sequence is, contains um, 8 to 32 syscalls, uh, which means the possible number of all combinations is very huge, and it would take many years for further to execute all the combinations. Uh, and more importantly, uh, the kernel father would waste the most time executing low quality input. Therefore, we need a better strategy to choose call combination. Uh, this color is the most widely used kernel folder. It uses choice table to guide call combination. Each item records probability that a syscall should be invoked before another syscall. Uh, therefore, the quality of generated call combination is actually decided by the quality of, sys, uh, of choice table itself. However, it is calculated by an empirical algorithm. We have talked. Uh, we have discussed it in detail in the paper. Uh, let's now focus on high, high quality inputs and see why its quality is high. Uh, the socket Cisco first creates some socket related kernel state inside the kernel. Then we use byte to byte address to that socket. Also, we mark that the socket is connectable through the license Cisco, and then we accept the external connection uh, from this socket. Use the accept. This call. As we can see, each formal call sets up related kernel state for the latter call, and the latter call can influence the by those states. Therefore, we can see a basic fact is that 
Inflow relations exist between two calls if execution of a former call can alter the latter's execution path. Furthermore, uh, we can see that execution path of one call may only be executed in certain kernel stage. For example, byte would return early if we don't create a socket for it first. Therefore, we should insert a MOSIS call that influences the target call so that we can trigger different kernel states. Uh, we can do this by taking relation into consideration when generating and mutating the call sequence. Therefore, we want to guide the kernel funding with relation learning. That is, we want to first learn the inflow relations between these calls dynamically, step by step, and we guide the mutation and generation with the learned inflow relations so that we can input increase the quality of inputs and speed up the funding process. Uh, here, the definition of relation. Uh, we need to focus that relation is all about the influence of execution paths, and the reason behind re uh, the reason behind relation is the kernel state. Uh, the first part of relation learning is static learning. We want to learn some obvious relations expressible by this law. Uh, the idea here is that the producer call of one resource can influence the consumer call of that resource. We can use an example to demonstrate this. The return type of first call is resource type socking, and the second call takes it as input, therefore we can inf infer the inflow relation. And the first call outputs resource type sock pair through a pointer type, and the second call takes it as input, therefore we can also infer the inflow relation. And the final example says that the first call returns the resource type socking, and the second call takes a different resource type sock. However, Socking is some type of sock, therefore we can also infer the inflow relation. Now we talk about the first part of dynamic learning, the sequence minimization. We only want to analyze calls that contribute to the new coverage, and we can continuously remove calls as long as the coverage keeps the same. We can use an example to demonstrate this. This sequence uh, will be minimized to this after minimization. And the syscall write will be removed because it does not contribute to the new coverage. Then we come to dynamic learning. We want to learn the relation not expressible by syslog description. The relation is all about execution path. How about we observe the coverage page? For each adjacent call, call pair CI and CG, we first remove CI, then we observe the coverage rate of CG. If the coverage of CG changes, then we can say CI must have inflow relation with CG because they are adjacent. The idea is very simple, and we can use this idea to learn relation step by step, continuously. Here is an example for this. Uh, we can use dynamic learning to infer that uh, Falco has a uh, has inflow relation with memory map, which is missed by static learning. Then we want to uh, we want to uh, generate high quality inputs with a larger relation, so that we can select calls that really matters. The basic step is that for a given sequence, we find all candidate calls that can be influenced by the call inside of the given sequence. Also, we call the number of calls that influence the candidates. We use it as weight. Then we choose based on the weight. Here is an example. For this sequence, the candidate would be listen and accept, and the weight of listen is 2 because both socket and buyer can inflow execution paths of listen. Therefore, listen has a higher priority to be chosen. Now let's go back to the fuzzy loop. As we can see, we use relation as meta information to guide the mutation and generation, so we can generate higher quality input. Then we use feedback as input to relation learning, and use relation learning to continuously refine the relation, this metadata. Then we can uh, generate better and better input. Now let's talk about the implementation. We use a different architecture design. As we can see, we run further directly on the host, or the executor runs inside the kernel, and the father as executor communicate with each other while coming inter VM shared memory. And we also use our modular design. We implement the whole system from scratch uh, with 60,000 of Rust code. We compare Hitler's performance with Syscaller and Moshi. And we can see the coverage improvement and bug detection improvement are very obvious. 
And here if we give example of load relations, as we can see, we are actually learning a very complex graph. Each node is a six core, and the edge represents the relation inflow relations between six cores. And here is the example of a subgraph of a KVM related six cores. Uh, in the experiment stage, we found 280 bugs in total, and 33 are previous unknown. And in practice, more importantly, we're running here in our internal server, which, which only has limited resource. However, uh, we can still report more than 20 bugs per week. Here is a part of communication history between us and the maintainers. In the future, we will integrate the healer to upstream and implement hub to support funding on multiple hosts like Cisco Scala does, and we will try to reduce the manual efforts of writing Cisco descriptions.